Hello, this is Warlord. Thanks for joining me. We got a lot to cover, so let's get started. I'm going to answer a couple of questions right quick. One of them is about using glow on a dash character. You use the glow channel on the skin, but the problem with dash characters is everything exports out as skin, so you might not get the desired results. You might not be able to separate the skin and get the glow you want. Same kind of problem with iClone characters. They have uppers, lower shoes. You may or may not get the desired result. In that case, you may want to start off with a nude character. Uh, something along that line. Another discussion I've been having is keeping a character's focus on a, an off-screen conversation. Well, the easiest way, of course, is just keep the other character in the scene but off-screen. Or if nothing else, use a dummy. Something like that. Uh, something to keep the character's attention. And while we're at that, let's talk about one other thing, and that's dead eyes. That's where you forget to tell the character to look at the, the camera. And you really do need to look at the camera because it just doesn't seem right to carry on a conversation without me exactly having my eyes on you. I even have my monitor just right below the, the camera on the tripod so it looks like I'm talking to you. So let's not run into the dead eyes problem. Try to remember to use the look at feature or use a dummy and look at something like that so your characters are a little more lively. Now let's go ahead and get to the email once again. Thank you for joining me. This first email involves using props of different scale with characters. This can be quite troublesome for new animators. Now, the assets that I use in this are available for download. Just look in the description for the link. Let's go ahead and get started. Okay, we have a regular size character, an oversized prop, and an undersized prop. So let's go ahead and get started. First thing I want to do is go to this water column. It's something I built in Studio Max. All it does is have an animated UV. It makes the water move up and down and so what we're doing right now is I'm just positioning it now where it looks like it's changing sizes that's just the way the glass is making it look right now and so all I'm doing right now is just scaling it up and eventually we'll get to where we just go straight up with it like that now you'll probably want to take more time than I'm doing with this right here we're going to rotate it down and just make sure that it fits in there good. It looks like we're a little bit short. Right there. Okay. Now let's go ahead and animate the water. We've got our water cylinder uh, selected, perform, default clip. And that's running way too fast for me, so as soon as it runs, finishes. Now we're going to open up the timeline with that water cylinder selected. We're going to go into animation. We're going to make sure loop is not selected, and we're going to stretch this out as far as it will go. Then we're going to loop it, even though we may not need all that animation. And now, yeah, that's a lot slower and that's a lot better. So let it run down a little bit. Now, let's say we want it to drain. That's built in, and all that actually is is a scale down. We'll let it drain. That's a little too fast for me, too. So what we're going to do is loop it. And make that as slow as it'll go also. Now we'll let it drain. That's a lot better. More natural motion. Let's get on down to where it drains. And then from there, we'll grab the tank. Open latch. Play down a little bit more with the tank, open tube. Now let's go take a look at our zombie character. As you can see, the tank's a little big, but we want the character is actually the proper size. So when you have something like a character particularly, resize everything else unless this is the one item that may be sized incorrectly. So all we're doing right now is I'm just kind of setting it in the floor. Then we're going to rotate it back. <clears throat> now we're going to take the water cylinder and we're going to attach it to the breeding tank then click the tank. And this way we'll be able to scale everything down. 
go ahead and grab the character move it down see how close to center we are pretty close and now let's go ahead and animate that character right quick it's created where we work with standard motion I've got the legs mast and the torso mast I'm using natural number two we'll go ahead and let it play out and let's let it go ahead and play out through the entire timeline we'll go back and fix this arm here in a minute where it sticks out a little too far but for right now let's just go ahead and let it play out we didn't necessarily have to mask the legs since I do have it rotated or tilted but I went ahead and masked the legs and the torso just so it wouldn't jump out of place with any of this motion and all we're trying to do is just impart enough motion where it's just not sitting there doing any doing nothing all right now we're finished with that let's go back to the beginning turn our prompts on and let's see oh yes the hand right click motion menu actually it's the arm we'll rotate it down a little and you might find out that you need to push your character back in a little further, something like that. Now let's see what we've got. It should eventually drain, then the latch open, then the tube open. And all the while we've got a little bit of animation going on in there for the character. Not too bad for about five minutes work. This next email question involves using a path, and when you attach things to a path, how difficult it is to manipulate them. Well, just like anything else that I pretty much do, we're going to use a dummy to solve that problem. So let's go ahead and take a look. Anybody that's ever used a path has found out that it's pretty frustrating to use the first time, because you don't exactly have 100% control over what you have attached to it. But there is a simple way around that. Let's take like right now, if we were to go ahead and add a new camera, Let's go ahead and add the camera. Let's select that camera. On the first frame, we'll set it to the pathway. Now let's go ahead and set this to preview. And we'll set this one to camera. Let's go to the end. Last keyframe, pick path. We'll go to there. And the problem we have now is that's fine, but it's not pointing ahead. So we can always use follow path. And then we have to find our axis. But as you can see, we're having a difficult time finding a proper axis. So really, you shouldn't even have to mess with any of that. Let's just go ahead and delete this camera. And just like anything else in animation, it's just a whole lot easier to use a dummy. So let's go ahead and let's bring in a block. Set it as a dummy. We'll make it about 20% where we can see it. And we'll attach it to the path on the first frame. Go to the last frame. And attach it to the path at the end. Then you can tell it to follow path. Doesn't really matter at this point where your axis is. Now let's create a new camera. This can be any object too, not just a camera. We'll select our camera. And what we're going to do is we're just going to link it to the box. And then we'll position it at the box. Now let me go back and change this back to preview. We'll change this to camera. Now we can go ahead and grab our camera and we're free to place our camera any way we wish at any out any uh, orientation or anything like that and now as you see it follows the path so remember to always use a dummy 
when you're attaching anything to a path, whether it's a car, uh, an airplane, anything that uses a path, a person, it's just easier to manipulate it this way. In our advanced segment, we're going to look at creating soft cloth in Studio Max. Specifically, we're going to look at creating the pinning points by using a mesh select modifier. Okay, this question involves creating pins for soft cloth. So we're in Studio Max 2014, and I'm just going to create a simple plane. And since we want to keep up with our polys, let's select one of the viewports, hit 7. We're at 32 polys. Now, that is not enough to make a smooth soft cloth. So we want to go into our modifier, and we want to change those segments from 4 by 4 to 12 by 12 at least. And now that's 288 polys. That's not too bad. Now we're ready to go ahead and add a mesh select. There's really not a whole lot to this. Open up the mesh select modifier, choose vertex. Now, let's say that I want this group right here, kind of down the center. Let's say that I want that to be one of the selection sets. All right, we come over here and we just call it whatever you want to name it, pin, center. I'm going to call it center, hit enter. I'm going to click off. Now let's say I want to do the corners. I'm going to select each corner. And you can select any number of vertices that you want. Come back in the selection set. I'm going to call it corners. Hit enter. Now we're finished as far as Studio Max is concerned. So now we're ready to go and export cloth. Now this is very important here. Make sure selection sets is checked. It's usually not checked by default. What you just created was a selection set, so make sure it's checked. Hit OK. Now we're ready to go into 3D Exchange. And open up the cloth. Now all we're going to do from here is just export it right back out. And you're just seeing me overwrite where I've done this before, just testing it. Now we're finished with that. We're going into Studio Max. Here's the cloth. I'm going to activate my physics. And then it's Alt Shift S. And as you can see, here's our pinning groups, center and corner. So we can activate the center. I'm sorry. I have to make sure active is clicked. And it'll hold. Now, we forgot to do one thing. You notice, you see the squares in there, how rough that is? I wanted you to see that. Let's delete that. Let's go back in here and select the mesh. This is in 3D Exchange. I've got this set at 180, which I think is the maximum. We're going to hit Auto Smooth. Now we're ready to go ahead and export it again. Just overwrite it. Now let's go ahead and bring it back in. Activate our physics. And let's go ahead and set one of the pin groups as active. And you can see how much smoother it is. And one of the reasons that I pinned it down the center was you may want to put you may want to put it on a center pole or something like that. You can select any group or, or anything that you want like that. And we could go back. Of course, I haven't said it's double-sided, so you're seeing through it. I'm going to go back and activate the corner pinning. And there's your pinning. Well, we've come to the end of another show. I appreciate you joining me, and I hope that you'll join me again. And until next time, let's create and animate.